Morning or evening, grace, brethren, and sisters, have all of the back along with us here with our Word Awakening and our midweek prayer meeting. <clears throat> and it is good to have everybody here with us and to uh, continue there in the Word of God and applying all of this to prayer. And uh, do keep us, do keep praying one for another, that God would be with each and every one of us, that God would supply our needs, that God would meet all of our financial needs, emotional needs, physical needs, spiritual needs, that God would save the lost, heal the sick, encourage the discouraged and reclaim the backslid that God would just touch each and every one of us and that we would all do what is necessary to uh, rebuild his work here and certainly praying for revival of what we need is a great great revival amen another great moving of God where people embrace what God wants to do for them you know that's something that we kind of I believe a lot of people don't realize is that embracing, you know, what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for Him. And, you know, that's what prayer is. You know, it's not a chore to live for God. You know, we're not slaves, but we're servants of the Most High God, like we looked at last uh, in our weekend study, you know, last week. And, you know, prayer is a great privilege. You know, if you embrace prayer, you'll just find the joy that it is. Like I often say, you know, having a prayer journal, you know, having a prayer life and being a student of God's Word going through the Bible. Is the most thrilling thing that I have ever experienced in my life. And so with that being said, as I said, as of uh, right now, I don't really know of any particular needs. That, uh, of course, you know, we always all need prayer, you know, for the basic necessities of life that God be with us. But I don't know anything really particularly uh, like with anybody's uh, health situation or anything. So uh, we'll go ahead now and get into the Word of God. And then I'll look at, uh, look at prayer. And I will go into prayer here. And starting in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, and verse number 10, where the Bible says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with, with, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. And so whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. That means with all of your might, all that you have. And if we had to give this little... Uh, a message, a devotion here, a title that would be praying with all thy might. We know we're to do everything to, for God to the best of our ability, and that certainly applies to our prayer life. And like, you know, we've uh, said before here, you know, prayer is the one thing that we're supposed to be constant in. That's why we use the term prayer life. You know, the Bible, you know, doesn't even command us to study the Bible without ceasing. You know, we should give God a major chunk of our time in studying His Word. You know, we're to always have a heart and a mind focused on prayer. You know, those men that God used, you know, like we often say, they, they were so wonderful because they gave so much to prayer. Not because they were intelligent men, you know, not because they wrote books or they were very eloquent in speech. But because they were men of prayer, they were men who put who put forward many, many hours in prayer. And uh, I'm going to first go over here to some verses that uh, we've used with this ministry a number of times. Uh, verses that have been found often, like in our uh, Sunday sermons. Uh, starting here, like in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse number 29. It says, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. See, if we want to find the will of God for our life, we've got to pray with all of our might. You know, like I was just praying before, I'm sorry, not, more, it's not really praying, but more so just meditating uh, before I came on here. You know, even in, and we've said this many times before, you know, even in big things, you know, people don't consult God. You know, like consult God, you know, who to marry. And see, and if we want to find the will of God, we've got to search Him with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. You know, not just a little bit. But we've got to really, really dig down and really be praying about major decisions in our life. And, you know, most people, they simply don't do that. You know, they don't consult God. You know, like over, over who to marry, you know, big decisions and things in their life. <clears throat> like a continuing here in Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 29, just going over a chapter more. It says, Oh, that thou were such an heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. So we got to have that heart for God. Keeping all of his commandments. I believe we mentioned that last Sunday or with our weekend study again. 
Well, it doesn't mean we're going to be sinlessly perfect, but things that the Bible says is wrong is not found in our house. Profanity isn't found in our house, not, not heard, not heard or saw with our, you know, in our house, not heard. You know, from our own speech, not from our children, not on the television. Oh, like a deep verse, abstain from all appearance of evil. That's right over there with that pray without ceasing verse in First Thessalonians 5. Like it says in Psalm, in the Psalms, that I would set no wicked thing before mine eyes, but that we keep all his commandments, that it might be well with them and with their children forever, that it would be well in our life. Because see, with people that don't, it's not. Like me and my wife have just been talking about that. You know, it's a shame, and I've mentioned that before. You know, even uh, the, the few young people that you do find in independent Baptist churches, like teenagers, whenever they get grown, they leave. Like a church that we know, that we know well. There was a, a young lady who's now about 21 years old. <clears throat> she was raised in an independent Baptist church, but now she's out of church, drinking alcohol, you know, partying, was putting pictures of it on social media. See, somebody did something wrong there. Like so many people are not even found in the house of God. Like that popular text there over there in Deuteronomy chapter 6, we'll just read a couple of verses of it. Verses 5 and 6, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So we got to keep those things in our heart. And we do that through prayer. We do that through studying the Bible. And we better be really diligently seeking the Lord and praying for revival. See, if you're not praying for revival, you're wrong. I mean, that's why the Lord had me start this ministry here of Word Awakening. That's why, you know is why, back in 2019, I came out of a secular job, a major reason why not just that, and we have the Bible Institute, Temperance Awakening, where, you know, we're, we're moving to another state, you know, to start a church, also reaching deaf and blind people, doing a lot of things, but revival is just the center of all that, and that's why we're here right now. You know, that's why we put this on numerous websites, why we put this all you know, all over the internet, all that the Lord allows us to do. Because, oh, how we need revival. We've got to, ver we've got to reverse this ungodly trend that's in our nation. Colossians 3.23, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not unto men. See, let's pray and live for God, not to impress somebody else, not for our own self. Not to look good for old so-and-so, but for God. Having a real heart for God. A real heart for revival. <clears throat> I know how that's so needed. Folks, we got to do it. You know, we got to get the trash out of our house. You know, we got to get this ungodly television and movies and, and music and all that hogwash out of our house. We got to start praying. Got to start praying individually and in, in private prayer. Got to be praying as a family. Got to be praying as a church. You know, really praying and really seeking revival. <clears throat> so thanks so much for being with us. Wonderful stuff there from the Word of God. Not because I preach it. Not because I'm anything at all. But because it's the Word of God. And all so, so needed in this day and time is revival. Like, Amen. Need that. You know, we need prayer warriors. Yes, I mean, I, I write books. I run a... You know, I'm a chancellor of a Bible institute. We need all that. I'm for all that. But we need prayer warriors. And all of that's for naught without prayer. You might say, well, I don't have a Bible college education. I don't, I don't have any kind of college education. May not have even graduated from high school. I'm not great at writing. I'm not great at this, that, and the other. Be a prayer warrior. That's a gift that's needed. Amen. Be a prayer warrior. Pray. Pray for revival. God's given you other gifts. You know, exercise those. Of course, you know, I do that as well. I know that I do a number of things. You know, my own self, but it's all for naught without prayer. I like what, oh, that was George Mueller, like who we've actually quoted a few times recently, like on our weekend study, I know, and so forth. I like what he said. Anything we do, you know, in word or in doctrine... It's all for naught 
if we don't pray. It's all for naught if we don't pray. I believe like uh, E.M. Bounds, yeah, E.M. Bounds. I believe it was E.M. Bounds who said something very similar to that as well. Like he said, anything we he said we must pray with anything that we do because if we don't pray, God is left out of the account of it, and that's why churches, you know, churches are so dead. That's why we don't have revival. Find a lot of Baptist churches, you know, in the southeast and in other parts, even in some other parts of the world. Of course, not just Baptist, but that goes for, you know, Methodist, Presbyterian, whatever, Pentecostal. But even, you know, with independent fundamental Baptist churches, you know, they got all the right doctrine and everything. Got the King James Bible. That's wonderful. But a lot of what churches are doing, you know, it's all for naught because there's no prayer in what we're doing. And if there's no prayer, like we said, there, our family isn't going to be what it ought to be. We're not going to be the right father. We're not going to be the right mother. We're not going to be the right parent. You know, we're not going to be the right preacher. We're not going to be the right deacon, the right Sunday school teacher. We have to pray. Amen. And so with that being said, we'll go ahead and go to the Lord and a word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the gifts of sin. We do thank you, Lord God, for our salvation. Thank you so much for that first prayer, you know, that you heard that we prayed, you know, when we asked you to come into our life and we repented of our sins and we got that saving faith. We thank you so much for that, Father. Thank you for the technology that we have so that we can meet over the cyber ways. You know, thank you for the good preaching and teaching that I'm, you know, that I'm privileged, you know, to listen to. You know, thank you for the, you know, the great men of the past, you know, that I listen to, you know, preach. And, of course, you know, the books that we have of these men. And I thank you for the influence that they've been in my life, like these men that we've quoted here. And I just pray, Lord, that we would all be that prayer warrior. You know, we would be revived and be that right prayer warrior. You know, that's where it's at. You know, and I pray that people would give you all their heart. You know, there's too many people. You know, they're just, you know, they're just 30%. They're 40%. You know, they don't have all their heart in it. You know, when they allow their children to do ungodly things, and we see the fruit of that. You know, their kids are leaving the church. You know, that they're going out into the world. You know, they're not staying there. You know, we're not having revival as a whole. You know, we're not, we're not revived. You know, we're just going the ways of the world. You know, we're just going in a downward spiral, and we got to start going the other way. You know, we've got to get back revived. we got to get back in the book. You know, we got to have high standards. You know, we need people that are more concerned about prayer, you know, than they are the ball games, than they are what's on the television, you know, than they are their own luxury and comfort and so forth. You know, we need parents, you know, that'll put forth the effort, you know, to teach their kids the Bible, to pray with their children, to teach them right from wrong. And just help us all to be faithful. You know, convict us in those areas where we're wrong. You know, saturate us in the Holy Ghost. And convict us. You know, show us our faults. You know, not, not that we want to point out anybody's faults, you know, because of ego or pride. But, you know, that, that's somebody that has a perfect heart for you. You know, they want to have a whole heart for you. You know, they don't want anything in their house that ought to not be. You know, they don't want any kind of ungodliness in their house that ought to not be. And I just pray, Lord, we do that and that we put forth the effort. And that we would just do what's necessary, you know, to live a clean, good, wholesome life. And just to bless the time that we've had here, you know, and we do pray for all the needs, the other needs that are out there, for the physical needs, financial needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs. We know that our dear listeners, you know, they have needs that we're not aware of, and we pray that you'd be with them. Uh, you know, for those that are, you know, sick, have diseases, have cancers and so forth, people having surgeries, recovering from surgeries. Uh, people that are on the bed of affliction, we pray that you touch them and help them and comfort them and show them things, you know, show them things from, you know, their illness. And we pray for those people, you know, that have spiritual needs, that are trying to get victory over things, that hold grudges. I pray they get the victory for people that are trying, you know, to be that prayer warrior, you know, that want to live a more wholesome life. You know, I pray that, that we get the victory, you know, over those things, you know, people that want their children, you know, to be more wholesome. And I pray that we would all just go in that direction, you know, be people that read, you know, be people that pray as a family. You know, not people that are engulfed in sports and, you know, all these secular activities and cartoons and all things of that nature, but people that are doing more wholesome things, that we would just put forth that effort and that we would get there, Father. And that the man would be the right man of the home, you know, fathers would be good fathers, mothers would be good mothers, children would be good children, that they'd honor their parents and that they'd be obedient and they do what their parents want them to do, you know, that which is godly, that which is wholesome, and that we would all just continue in the faith, continue in prayer, and for those that are lost, you know, we all have lost acquaintances, lost relatives, I pray that you'd save those people, you know, use us to reach them. I pray that you'd convict them and give an opportunity to be saved. 
And I pray for people that are discouraged that you'd encourage them. And for people that are backslid that they'd be reclaimed. You know, people that have walked away from you that you'd reclaim them. And that you'd bring them back into the fold. And I pray that you'd strengthen churches. Oh, how we need to be strengthened. You know, and I pray churches would be just that. They'd be real churches that pray, that are in the Word. You know, that are teaching and preaching the Bible. You know, they're getting it right. You know, churches, you know, that are more concerned about their spiritual life. You know, then they are other things. You know, that churches would be consumed with you. You know, that they'd give their heart to you. That we wouldn't take our heart off on other things, on other secular activities. And that you'd convict people of their wrongs. You know, you convict people of, of this other idolatry that's out there. You know, the idolatry of sports and movies and, and all this other stuff that people put before you. You know, that's just the fact of the reality. You know, we've got people putting hours, you know, into the television, you know, and giving you ten, ten minutes. And I pray that people would be convicted of that and they'd get their heart right and that they'd be the right prayer warrior and that we'd saturate ourselves in prayer and that you'd saturate us in Holy Ghost conviction. You know, you've revealed me a couple of things lately and I thank you for that, Lord. And I pray that we just continue rightly, that we'd get our hearts right and that you'd revive us and you'd call more people into revival. You know, you would call more men to preach. You know, you'd call more missionaries, pastors, evangelists and so forth. But you'd also call people to be revivalists and ladies to be revivalists. You know, to have a heart for revival, to be prayer warriors. You know, a heart for the ministry. And just give us all that which we need, Lord. Just help us all in our endeavors. Like I know a lady trying to, uh, learning to play the piano. You know, I pray that you'd help her play that piano, Lord God. I know you've, uh, you've led her to do it. You know, we do believe that. Just give her the ability to do it. And just teach her. May she be used to your honor and glory. You know, as well as other people, you know, trying to do things for you. I pray you just strengthen me the things that you've led people to do and called people to do. You know, I pray that you just strengthen them, you know, help them do it, and give us all souls for our labor. And bring us back to the next point in time. Think of the good time we had in your word and in prayer. And that we just be used, Lord, for your honor and glory. First, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen and amen. And thank you so much, folks, for being with us. And we'll see you next time. Until the day break in the shadows, flee away. I am Dr. Cooper, and I love you, and I appreciate you.